never even dreamed in my wildest dreams that I would live in another country. So you don't really need to do this after you're in the last couple glasses of a bottle. Hello, I'm Patricia Gross, and today we'll develop a cultural snapshot of Mendoza as we meet the people who are making a great mark in the area. Ah, come see, come see. Buen viaje! I soon gravitated towards being outside. The elements, the open air, the blue sky, the vineyards. What I love about Mendoza is that they really have discovered a great secret on how to live. I just knew in my bones that this is the new spot. sleep five, five and a half hours a night to do this. And after doing that for 25 years, I was tired. And so part of it was to take a break. And in fact, when I first came to Argentina, the f those first two weeks, I slept 12 and 13 hours a day. Michael is no stranger to the high stress American rat race. He helped run the very successful Rock the Vote effort, and he worked on the very unsuccessful John Kerry presidential campaign. So after the election, I came to Argentina for what I thought was gonna be a three week vacation. But when Michael saw Mendoza, he fell in love with it. He found new passions and created a business like no other in the world. I never even dreamed in my wildest dreams that I would live in another country. If you believe with our premise that Mendoza is Napa 30 years ago, what does Mendoza need to reach its potential in terms of wine tourism? What businesses might be profitable and what businesses might be needed? He teamed up with a local partner whose family had experience in the wine industry. Together, they created the Vines of Mendoza, selling private vineyard estates. Here in Argentina, the costs are a fifth or less of the cost of doing a similar project in, in Napa. So we've got a big piece of land. We've got about 950 acres, and we've divided it up into 100 small vineyard estates where people have their own parcel of land. It ranges between three and 18 acres. We plant the grapes to their specifications, and then uh, once the grapes are mature, we, uh, we make wine for them. They're from about 60% from the U.S., a good chunk from Western Europe, and recently we've expanded our base of owners in South America. Michael came from a family of foodies and often spent vacations in the wine regions of France, Italy, and California. But when he first arrived in Mendoza, something clicked. My now business partner, Pablo Jimenez Reilly, showed us all around Mendoza every nook and cranny, and I just completely fell in love. It was just a magical experience. And the timing was right. His personal life was in shambles. It was a perfect storm. In the previous year, I, I got divorced. I sold my house and put all my things in storage. So initially it was, you know, I'll stay here for six months and then go back. But the longer he stayed, the closer he came to finding a part of himself he had not fully explored. The more I learned, the more passion I became, the more I wanted to learn. I never thought about being in the wine business. For me, it was a, it's an adventure. Every bottle of wine you open is different. It's a mystery every time. And he soon realized potential synergies of the two very different cultures. We would get together and share some wine and just start brainstorming about, from my perspective of being a typical um, wine tourist, what would I want in Mendoza? And what, what does Mendoza need to become a great wine capital? The real reason you do this is to get some air in there. Okay. And as you let air into the wine, it opens up. He helps each owner create the wine to his liking. We send you a case of wine blind, without labels on it, and have you taste through it and give us your feedback. And it might be as sophisticated as specific notes, do I love this note of tobacco or ch black cherry in this wine, or it might be, I liked number one, three, and eight, and didn't like number four. And so then we'll get you on the phone with Santiago Chaval, our winemaker, and work through and try and create a profile of the type of wines you want to create. We're here to make the best wine in Argentina. Whether that's going to take us three more years, five years, ten more years, we don't know, but we're going to make the best wine in Argentina. A workaholic at heart, he still takes time to smell the grapes. Uko is a Labrador retriever, Black Lab. She's named Uko for the Uko Valley, which is where our vineyard is located. But we actually have called her Maria Uko because Uko is, would be a boy's name, so everyone uh, gave me hell for naming her just Uko, so now she's, she's Maria Uko. And uh, one of the amazing things about living in Argentina is that She's with me all the time. 
and Uko is part of this team. Part of the idea in moving to Argentina was to take things a bit easier. You know, my life in, in tech and my life in politics was six and a half, seven days a week. An avid photographer, his next project is a book of photos on Mendoza and what he's done here. You know, taking it easy. <laughs> and we still work hard, but I love it. Creating a wine tour business would be an opportunity for me to share all the richness here in Mendoza to those abroad. good sense of timing here. Sometimes it infuriates me being from New York. I'm impatient sometimes with the Mendocino, I call it Mendocino time, which spans anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and a half. So if I invite someone at 8 o'clock, I'll expect them from between 8.30 to 10 o'clock. So what do I do? I invite them at 6 because then they come at the right time. Some of the best rafting and kayaking in Argentina happens right here in the Mendoza River. It's also where we begin the story of Carolyn Gallagher from Sacramento, California. One day after kayaking, I had to return all my lended equipment and I said, gosh, what I would do to have my own equipment here. And they said, oh, write Martin Moreno an email. He'll bring it down for you. Oh, great. Who is that? Where is he? Today, she and Martin own Argentina rafting expediciones. They have two daughters, Carmen and Julia. Besides sharing their love for family, Carolyn and Martin feed off each other's entrepreneurial spirit. This is the house I told you. We found it in Potrerillos. It was a small town then. This is in 1997. Martin and Rodolfo were physical education students in college. They wanted to be in the mountains on the river. So they started this company. For Carolyn, the city of Mendoza felt right from the start. She first came to Mendoza back in 1992 to visit a friend. My first introduction to Mendoza was through Marcela Lledo, a good friend. This was back in 1990. She uh, had gone to California to be an exchange student in my high school. It was more of a life-changing experience for myself than for Marcela. And in 1992, I came down. Couldn't wait to see her, couldn't wait to meet her family. And, and I was welcomed by all of her friends with this whole new culture, with this whole new, all these new customs. Of course, the best thing that happened in the street was uh, meeting Caroline. Uh, she was a friend and now she's my spiritual guy, um, part of my soul family. She only can see the positive things about life, so that's why she go forward without scared or, or without uh, bad feelings. So I, I tried to learn about that. It was in Mendoza that Caroline discovered how to combine all her talents, rafting and kayak guide, teacher, linguist, wine lover, and entrepreneur. Yes. She fell in love with the people and the culture, adding her own American values to everyday life, starting with mate, the Argentine tea, and it represents the hospitality of this culture. And she's tried to combine that hospitality with American ingenuity in her own company, Uncorking Argentina, offering customized wine and food tours throughout Mendoza's wine country. Uh, come see, come see. And I came down to Mendoza to be a teacher, uh, but I soon gravitated towards this wine and this being outside, the, the elements, the open air, the blue sky, the vineyards, and I knew that creating a wine tour business would be an opportunity for me to be a teacher outside and to share all the richness here in Mendoza to those abroad. Okay. Oh, she's got it's an English coming. test? Okay, yes. right. Let's see, yes. that fits that yeah. perfectly. So, so, so you're first time you're from Cordoba, right? Yes, yes, you're from Cordoba? Yes. Did you come in the car? Yes. yes. A long trip. Yes. 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 Right now, we're going to turn away from frequency production systems Today we'll 
get a feel for what it's like to be an uncorking Argentina tourist. The Mendoza River flows from the upper mountains down here. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go over to the banks of the river. We're going to see this important Chipoleti Dam. It's gonna go into Luján de Cuyo's farmlands, into Potrerillos, and we're gonna get some views of the mountains and the river. This is a, an opportunity to really explore Malbecs in different expressions. We have first, this is a Malbec to blend from different vineyards. Achabal Ferrer is one of about 700 wineries in this region, and things are looking good for the next harvest. You can notice that the little petals of the flowers are here. They've been pollinated well, and now they're creating fruit. Carolyn's business has grown from less than 100 tourists in 2003 to over 400 today. But just as important is her role in spreading cheer and goodwill for her new home in Argentina. <laughs> and I felt like there's so much beauty there that I would love to bring people from the United States or from California to come celebrate the same wine country on the other side of the hemisphere. And she's convinced once people come, they'll return just like she did. When you start discovering what you really want, Mendoza was going to give me the space to be able to figure it all out. There's less need to have a better car than your neighbor. There's less need to have a, a more expensive house. There's less need to have a weekend house. Here, if people have enough um, money to be able to put food on the table and have an asado, uh, a barbecue on, on a Sunday with, with family, they're perfectly happy. They don't, they're not always looking for more and more and more. And I think that's probably the biggest contrast between um, what I've seen here in Argentina than, than in living in, in the U.S. And in some ways, it's amazing and I love it. In other ways, it's frustrating. If you want, if we need to get something done and we want to hire somebody to say, okay, look, we'll pay them extra work on Sunday, it doesn't matter. You could pay somebody triple, quadruple, they're not going to work on Sunday. Sunday's the day with the family and they've got an asado and they're going to be there no matter what. Dodi has always lived on the edge. As a TV producer, he always strived to figure out what made people tick. What made them interesting? Like his last project, about people doing something strange. Cover crazy sports around the world. We're talking wife carrying championships. They have at least 30 or 40 different crazy sports. And then, big surprise, an unexpected crazy thing happened. I dove into a pool head first. It was only three feet, and I smashed my head. For the next six months, he had hallucinations. He felt compelled to seek out a special healer to understand what on earth had happened to him. And he said that, you know, you're very, very lucky. Number one, to be alive. Number two, because you have now been awakened in, in a certain sense that a lot of people uh, never get a chance to do. And so began Langdon's spiritual journey, sort of an American version of a walkabout. About seven or eight months after my concussion, I received a vision, is what I would call it. It was a, it was a repeat dream. I was in this beautiful party with hundreds of my friends. It looked like a vineyard uh, with beautiful mountains in the background. And about two or three months later, I was at a penthouse party and there was a book on Mendoza by Sarah Matthews. And I started rifling through the pages and sure enough, exactly what I saw in my vision was in one of those pages. Uh, and I thought, well, that's it. This is where I have to go. I didn't know anything about Mendoza. I just walked in and just started inventing a new life down here the moment I set foot out of the airport. 
I just knew in my bones that this is the new spot. In just a few years, Langdon says he's become a full-fledged Mendocino. Peaches, pears, apricots, all in season, all grown right here. What I love about Mendoza is that they really have discovered a great secret on how to live. Money is less important. Making sure that you're really taking time to let the world pass by in a natural, relaxed way. Uh, they have a very good sense of timing here. Sometimes it infuriates me being from New York. Compared to his chaotic life in the U.S., Langdon is slowly slowing down, reinventing himself as a wine food pairing specialist. Today, we'll eat the typical Argentine asado or barbecue with a touch of American ingenuity. Argentines seldom eat fruit with meat. Langdon is changing that. The menu today is a demonstration of what I do with wineries. We're going to have an Alpha Cru au wine, 2003. It's a blend. Smell it. Taste it. Cheers. Cheers. I'm sensing forest fruits like uh, raspberries, uh, cherries, dark cherry in the mm. nose. And that's very characteristic of Tempranillo and also Malbec. The idea is that the wine should taste better with the food. Mm. So it should be able to give you a new little take on the flavor profile of the wine. That was just the appetizer. Afterwards, the Langdon feast begins. <laughs> Then came the sweet ending to the feast. Hey, dessert. Excellent. Here we go. This is an 88% chocolate from Venezuela. Chocolatier and Reiki master Chrissy Betancourt is Langdon's fiance. And it's made with chocolate, butter, and cream. She too came to Mendoza with a similar story. She left her job after years of soul searching and meditation. I kept getting these visions of this mountain range. So I used to spend a lot of time by the river, and there was this willow tree that I used to perch up into every evening. And so I, one night I perched up there, and I, I started just you know, thinking, am I doing the right thing? And something caught my attention beside me, and I looked down, and there was a, a little rock. And I looked, I picked up the rock, and it was a brownish-red color. And no word of a lie, on the rock you could see, and it, like, it looked like an embossment of a mountain range in that reddish-brown color, and it was the same color of the mountain range I had seen in my meditations. And so for me, I felt that was my guides telling me to continue on with my instinct. And I picked Mendoza because I saw that it was closest to the mountains. And when I got off the plane and I saw the mountain range, I realized it was the same mountain range that had been coming in in my meditations. And I knew that I was in the right place immediately. Langdon and Chrissy plan to marry next year, and Langdon's wedding party is close to what he envisioned in his dream. We're going to get married in this cabana area, right over there, where there is sort of an Indian burial stone. And I bet you it's going to be pretty close to what my dream was. It's not exact, but all the elements are in place. The feeling that I was celebrating something very special. After the accident, Langdon began doing free healings and Chrissy works part-time as a Reiki master. They plan to grow their own vegetables and herbs to live a more sustainable life and to live their dream. But I think that happens when you start following your passion. When everything falls through, you know, when, when you strip away all the fluff and you start really discovering what you really want, Mendoza was going to give me the space to be able to figure it all out.
en el turbión ansias sepultadas para siempre masa pixelada sin inspiración duerme sueña asfalto duele y siente En mi amor 